Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome to our study of um, electrochemistry. And we are going to continue from where we ended in the previous session when we were dealing with galvanic cells. So we want to uh, wrap up by touching a few more things which we didn't finish, which will enable us to answer some detailed questions from our past papers. Uh, so you'll see that um, the stuff they ask in an exam is not this general knowledge which we put up as the primary information explaining the concept, uh, but it is the detailed applications which involves, <coughs> a, which involves the calculations, the diagrammatic representations, and the um, and, and the interpretations we attach to, to the concept. So you will see when we are answering the question in a short while uh, from the past exam paper, 2018, May, June, paper two. So just to give a quick recap so that whatever I'm going to introduce here will flow smoothly with um, what we are going to apply today. So you see that we agree that a galvanic cell is a device in which chemical energy is converted um, to electrical energy and it uses a spontaneous redox reaction to produce a current that can be used to generate energy or to do work. Okay, so we illustrated a diagrammatic representation of a, of a galvanic cell and show the anode and the cathode and the porous disc which serve as a filter um, to separate the ions from this side to that side so that you complete the circuit. Okay. So in an exam, if they ask you to draw a galvanic cell, just a simple, beautiful diagram like this, which is clearly labeled, is um, very, very important. Now, points to not. <clears throat> we agree that this is the reducing agent and it, it loses electrons at the anode, while um, this is an oxidizing agent, so it gains electrons at the cathode, okay? And the flow of electrons is from the anode to the, uh, to the cathode through the outside channels, okay? So to give a quick summary, we agreed that oxidation occurs at the anode, reduction occurs at the cathode, and a salt bridge or porous disc allows ions to flow without extensive mixing of the solution. So it serves to balance up the um, ions across the concentration gradient. So the salt bridge contains a strong electrolyte held in a gel-like matrix and a porous disc contains tiny passages that allow hindered flow of ions. Okay, so let's take a closer look at this galvanic cell. Um, so you can actually see that this is a copper cathode and a zinc anode. I want you to take note of this. Uh, in the previous session, I took my time to explain how do you make an intelligent decision of which material do I select to use as an anode and to use as a cathode. And I gave you three rules to follow on how you can uh, determine which materials to put together when you are making a galvanic cell and make an intelligent decision of which one is going to stand out as a cathode and which one is going to stand out as an anode. So this all comes down to how you calculate the standard electrode potential of the cell, the overall cell potential. And we agree that the cell potential we calculated by saying cathode minus anode, cathode minus anode. And we agree that when you carry out that simple mathematical calculation, 
cathode minus anode, meaning that you go to your standard tables where you pick up the values, the respective values of your materials which you have selected, and, I, and when you subtract them, you will see that if the E, if the, the potential for one uh, electrode, the electrode potential uh, or the E cell is greater than zero, then it means that the cell is going to, to, to work very well. But if it is less than zero, it cannot uh, happen. And if it is equal to zero, then you know that it's an equilibrium. You're not also going to have any flow of electrons. So your choice of the electrode should be such that if you say the cathode minus anode, it gives you a value, a voltage, which is greater than zero. So look, at, look in this case, um, a, a, what we are using is our cathode is copper. And the copper has got a value of 0 0.34 volts. And then, um, so actually copper is got a 0 0.34 volts, while zinc has got 0 0.76. So when you do your, your E-cell calculation, you will see that you, you are going to get your overall voltmeter measured as 1.1 volts. So we are going to do some more examples and uh, work out the, uh, the voltages and see if the cell is going to work or not. So we are saying a galvanic cell consists of an oxidizing agent in the cathode half cell and a reducing agent in the anode half cell and the electrons flows through a wire from the anode half cell to the cathode half cell. And the driving force that allows electrons to flow is what we call the electromotive force or the cell potential which we are going to make specific reference to it because even in an exam they will ask you calculate the EMF or the cell potential. Um, under standard conditions or whatever conditions they would have given you. So I think that the unit of electrical potential is a volt where one volt is equal to one joule per column. And we can represent it with this for a electromotive force. So take for example, you are given iron and copper as materials in an electrochemical reaction and the ion is ion three plus ions, which are in solution, while copper is an, a solid plate used as an electrode. So you see that where they interact, copper loses electrons to ion, such that this becomes copper two plus and ion two plus. So this is not a balanced equation, eh? Because if this is, uh, 3 plus, and then this is now 2 plus. It means that we need two of the ions, ions to react with one copper atom to give you copper 2 plus, and this should be 2 Fe2 plus. Okay, here's the half equation, just like I'm saying. Ion uh, 3 plus plus an electron, meaning that the ion is being reduced. It's picking up an electron. And it becomes ion 2 plus. So the E cell is 0 0.77 volts. While the copper 2 plus is going to, if it picks up two electrons, it gives us an E cell of 0 0.34 volts. So the reverse is true where we are saying the bal to balance the cell reaction and calculate the cell potential, we must reverse reaction to where we are saying now the copper is being ionized, meaning that it's undergoing oxidation to give us copper 2 plus plus 2 electrons and the E cell is equal to minus 0 0.34 volts. So each copper atom produces two electrons, but each ion ion can only accept one at this juncture. So therefore reaction one must be multiplied by two. So if we multiply it by two, we are saying two ion three plus plus two electrons to give us two ion two plus, still our 
E cell will remain 0.77 volts. So we are now saying for that reason, a ion is going to serve as our cathode while copper is going to serve as our anode. And we are saying a balanced cell reaction is such that copper plus two ion three plus ions, it gives us copper two plus ions plus two ion two plus ions. And to calculate the cell potential, we are saying E cell is equal to cathode minus anode, like we agreed earlier on. And since this is our anode minus 0 0.34 and our cathode 0 0.77, so if you subtract this, it will give you 0 0.43. So here is a thumb through all the time when you are dealing with cells or when you are dealing with electrochemical quantities. Please take note of this. E cell is equal to cathode minus anode. And like I said, I'm emphasizing this point that this should be the basis of you, how you choose materials which you are going to assign as the anode or cathode, because every time your value is positive, it means that the cell itself is capable of producing the electrical energy which you are targeting to make. But if your mathematics here gives you a negative value there, boys and girls, we are saying that's impossible. That cell does not work. Okay. So here we are. So let's calculate the standard cell potential of silver and zinc and try to figure out which one do we assign as an anode, which one do we assign as a cathode. So here we are. We are saying given the following uh, reduction potentials, you've got silver plus, I mean picking up an electron, meaning that it's undergoing reduction. It's E cell or half cell uh, is equal to 0 0.8 volts, while zinc picking up two electrons, it will give you minus 0 0.76. So which one do you think should be our uh, 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 anode and which one do you think should be our cathode. If you take a closer look at our previous example, we had to assign a ion as our cathode uh, because it is undergoing reduction and um, our copper is our anode because it is undergoing oxidation and why are we doing that? Because we are agreeing that all the time in an, a galvanic cell, a reduction is taking place at the anode while oxidation is taking place at the cathode. So all those should speak to each other as you are selecting the right materials to assign at the respective potential. So, to calculate the cell potential for the following reaction and predict whether the reaction will take place or not. So we are saying zinc plus silver to give us zinc 2 plus plus silver, a solid. So our calculations will be such that let's actually perform the calculation. So how are we going to do this calculation, uh, boys and girls? We are saying it's our silver, we are saying it's 0 0.8, while zinc is 0 0.76. So we want to see that if we say cathode minus anode, is it going to give us a positive value? So if we say a 0 0.80 minus minus um, 0 0.76. What does it give us? So you see that this will give us a plus um, 1.56 volts. So if this is, a, as you can see, this is a positive a value, and we are saying if we are to set up things like this, so that means our silver is going to 
serve as the cathode while our zinc is going to serve as the anode. So we are going to have our silver there as our cathode and our zinc as the anode. And the moment you have a positive value like this, it means that the reaction is, uh, it can take place. But if this reaction, I mean, this calculation was giving us a negative value there, then it will tell you that the reaction does not take place. Okay. So this is what we are saying, uh, boys and girls, as we'll be taking it to our uh, a past paper. So we can also practice with this one, which we are, when we are saying given the following reduction potentials, reduction potentials, copper and nickel, uh, if we are to put them in, a re in an electrochemical uh, reaction, which one is going to serve as our cathode, which one is going to serve as an anode? So you'll see that um, if we are to say our copper is the cathode and our nickel is the anode, it will become 0 0.34 minus minus 0 0.323. So it will become positive 0 0.57 volts. So that means the reaction will take place. Okay. So also here, um, so we, we will use that kind of a mathematical application to answer this uh, part which says predict whether the following reaction will take place or not. Okay. So here we are. <clears throat> How do we use cell notations? This is the, uh, uh, a very important part which I want you to pay particular attention to because in an exam they will definitely ask you uh, to interpret cell notations for galvanic cells. So here we are. We are saying we, we use to describe electrochemical cells and anode components are listed on the left all the time. The anode, you, lift, you list it on your left hand side while the cathode components are listed on the right. And then you separate this by a double vertical line and what does this double vertical line specifically uh, means? So, so it means, uh, I mean, we, are, we are going to determine it when we are doing all this representation. So we are saying that the concentration of aqueous solutions should be specified in the notation when known. And also you need to put the state symbols where they are supposed to go, like for example, where they are solids, aqueous solutions um, a, a clearly show which one uh, which which one is, is is in the respective state so let's take a closer example of this uh, cell representation which we is using magnesium as an anode and aluminium as a cathode i want you to take a a, a particular uh, to pay particular attention on how you arrange the species. So we are starting with a solid magnesium and we are saying this magnesium is going, we know that at the anode, um, what is happening at the anode, it is going to be oxidized. So this magnesium is a solid here and then it's, uh, it's, it's turning into magnesium 2 plus in aqueous solution. And then the double uh, vertical line, it, it separates two different half cell electrodes. Okay, so this is the one electrode, the anode, and then the other electrode, the uh, cathode. And we are saying at the cathode, reduction is taking place, and the reduction is such that the aluminium is picking up electrons so it's coming from an aqueous solution to a to become a solid meaning that it's going out of the solution so when you write the half a uh, electrode reactions this is what is happening at the anode and this is what is happening at the cathode okay so how do you give a detailed description 
of the galvanic cell. We are saying the cell potential is always positive for the galvanic cell, where E cell is equal to the cathode half cell minus the anode half cell is given in the table of half cell potential. So an anode is the negative terminal all the time. Remember, we say that uh, at the anode, what is happening? Oxidation is taking place, meaning that a species or ions in the solution, when they get to the anode, they lose electrons to the anode, and then the anode will transmit the electrons through the outside channels to the cathode. So because the anode receives electrons which are being given off by the species which are in solution, it means that it becomes negatively charged. And because the cathode, which would have uh, received electrons from the other side, at, at, at its interface, it gives or it allows the electrons to go into solution where they are picked up by ions in solution uh, uh, during a reduction process. So the loss of electrons, I mean the discharge of electrons at the cathode will make the electrode itself to be positive. So we are saying that since the anode is the negative terminal and the cathode is the positive terminal, electron flows from the anode, meaning that from the negative to the positive, all in a galvanic cell all the time. So current flows from cathode to anode, okay? And positive ions flows from anode to cathode half cells and negative ions flows from the cathode to the anode through the salt bridge as we balance up the respective ions in the half uh, electrode potential. So if we are to designate the anode and the cathode, what is the criteria of choosing these materials? We are saying that if you write a balanced net ionic equation for the spontaneous cell reaction, the oxidizing agent, the one which with more positive or less negative reduction potential will be the cathode. I will repeat this and emphasize it again and probably take you back to an example which we applied earlier on. We are saying that the oxidizing agent, we, where, you rip, where you have got a material with the most positive or the less negative reduction potential will be the cathode, while the other one will be the anode, meaning that the opposite is true. Okay, so oxidation occurs in anode half cell and reduction in the cathode half cell. And we are, we are saying that for that reason, the anode is always negative while the cathode is always positive, okay? So look at this. Um, <clears throat> if we look at the cell potential and the electrical work which is done there, you will see that the maximum cell potential and the free energy is directly related uh, to the free energy difference between the reactants and the energy in the cell reaction. So the work that is done by an electrochemical cell in any real spontaneous process, the work is always lost or wasted. So we will say um, in any real spontaneous process, some energy is always lost or wasted and the actual work obtained is always less than the calculated or the maximum value. So let's look at this um, concentration cell where you've got 0.1 mole of silver and 0.1 mole of nitrate ions. And we've got our porous disc and you can actually see that uh, our silver here, a uh, electrode and we also have a silver electrode and our electrons are flowing like that. So what is gonna happen is that for the concentration cell depicted in the previous diagram, we can indicate the anode and cathode half cells and calculate their cell potential for the concentration cell depicted in the diagram. Now, I'm not going to go into the fine details about this, but what I want to quickly take you through to is this, what we call the nest equation in an exam 
they will ask you to make representations of the next equation where we are saying at 25 degrees uh, E is equal to the standard uh, potential a minus 0 0.0591 which is a constant over the number of moles log Q okay so let's quickly take all this information we have uh, uh, explained here and answer a typical examination question like the following <laughs> here we are question 8 um, in our 2018 uh, paper 2 May June so he's saying consider the electrochemical cell represented by the cell notation below where X is an unknown matter so, if you look at this, we've got a platinum which is solid, a, which is a, 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 an electrode in a solution of ion 2 plus ions and ion 3 plus ions in aqueous solution. And then here is our, so meaning that this is our anode. Remember, we agree that this notation is very, very important in, 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 in a way such that um, we agree that when you are always making representations of a cell, the species that make up the anode half cell are always on your, on, on your left, while the um, cathode is on your right. Okay, so, so this is the cathode and this is the anode. Okay, right. So we are saying that the cell potential of this cell was found to be 0 0.03 volts. So the, we are saying write down the type of electrochemical cell illustrated above. Boys and girls, you already now know what this is. That this is a galvanic cell uh, as, a, as a result of these uh, representations we are seeing there. Now, here's a nice question. What does the single line in the above cell notation represent? The single line, be careful, when we are talking of the single line, we are talking about this, these single lines there. And as opposed to the double line over there. So you see that the single lines, they separate solids from ions in solution. Ions in solution. So, so, so technically, we can say that um, the single lines, they separate the phase boundaries of the species interacting at the respective electrode uh, uh, cell. Uh, and then if you are to write down the half reaction that takes place at the anode in the above cell. So this is what confuses uh, most of you uh, boys and girls in an exam because your failure to understand how do you structure a representation of an electrochemical cell in terms of a cell notation? That's where all the uh, hell will break loose there because if you cannot identify from this representation, you see, they just give you this. They didn't tell you that uh, uh, this side is what what, this side is what what. It's you who is supposed to attach an intelligent interpretation of the representation being made here of this cell notation. And I am emphasizing this for the millionth time that boys and girls, always those parameters represented on your left hand side on your left hand side represents the anode and at the anode what are we saying what is happening at the anode oxidation is taking place boys and girls and on our right we have the cathode and at the cathode reduction is taking place so for that reason what we are seeing here is the anode where oxidation is taking place. And for that reason, we are seeing that the oxidation, the way in which it is taking place is ion two plus, it's losing electrons to give us ion three plus, plus an electron, 
And remember, always represent things in their standard form like that. So this is for a this is for, 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 for two marks where you are supposed to show what is happening where and how. Okay. And then the next part is asking you to identify X with the aid of a calculation. Oh, boys and girls, this is very, very simple. What do you do? You simply go to your uh, tables. Okay, let's see if it is this one where we once represented. Um, Potential diagrams, I mean, a potentials table where we show the reduction in the oxidation potentials. So that means it's this one. Let's see. Yes, here we are. So, what you simply do here, you come to this. Remember, uh, the question told us that the voltage. Uh, the E cell was found to be 0 0.03, meaning that if we say the overall cell is equal to uh, E cathode minus E anode, and you are told that this is equal to 0 0.03 volts. So we don't know what um, a, the, the, the cathode is, but we know the anode that it is the ion. So we are going to say this is going to be equal to X minus, let's look for ion, where ion changes from two plus to three plus. Is it represented here? So here we are. We are given a ion 3 plus um, aqueous plus an electron to give us ion 2 plus. So the value here is plus uh, 0 0.63. But we want the reverse, where ion gives up an electron. So this becomes minus 0 0.68. So this becomes minus 0 0.68. 6, 8, I'll put it in brackets like this. So we can make a X subject formula because we are now saying X minus this, minus minus 0 0.68 is equal to 0 0.03. So this becomes X plus 0 0.68 is equal to 0 0.03. So, um, sorry, so, so what it means is that x is equal to 0 0.03 minus 0 0.68, which gives you 0 0.6 minus 0 0.65. So this is a minus sign, a minus 0 0.65. So if I'm to minimize this, and bring up my question like that, where we are saying we need to identify x by means of a calculation. So you see that um, a, if you, you subtract this, E cell is equal to E reduction minus E oxidation. So ion is 0 0.77. So actually it should give you a 0 0.80. So we now look at the value which is equal to 0 0.8. So if you look here, 0 0.85.8, there we are. Yes, it's silver. So what it means here is that um, for this question where we have to identify x with the aid of a calculation, X is going to be silver. So this is going to change to silver plus and silver solid. Okay. And then the last questions here we are saying 
So if you are, you've got this expression where you've got a, the half cell is connected to a copper half cell, write down the chemical symbol for the electrode in the cathode half cell. So the electrical symbol in the cathode half cell, we are saying if this is the um, ion 2 plus changing to ion 3 plus, and it is connected to a cell with a copper chain, turning to copper 2 plus. How do you determine which one is going to be the cathode and the anode? You compare their half cell potential. So you will see that uh, uh, for this, uh, the expression will be such that the electrode, the chemical symbol for the electrode in the cathode, the one which is going to be cathode, is going to be the platinum. Why? Because this is more positive than the, the copper, which will now have to be the anode. So in other words, we are saying this has now been reversed. Where this one was supposed to be the anode, it becomes the cathode, and our copper becomes the anode. So now they are, they are from here, now that you have identified that the, cop, the platinum solid is now the cathode, uh, name of the oxidizing agent that is uh, in contact with that, it will be the ferrous um, ions or ion 3, ion 3 plus ions, okay. So if you are to write down the balanced cell reaction that takes place in the cell, so we are now saying that the ion 3 plus ions, they are now picking up electrons Instead of uh, the ion 2 losing electrons, the ion 3 plus, they are now picking up electrons uh, from the copper. So this is what is going to happen. We are going to have ion 3 plus uh, picking up electrons to give us ion 2 plus. And where are they picking up the electrons from? They are picking up the electrons from copper, which is giving up electrons like this. So the overall reaction is supposed to be two. So you can see that one ion three plus can only pick one electron, but the copper is giving away two electrons. So we are supposed to have two of these uh, three plus picking, uh, reacting with one copper to give us two ion two plus plus a copper two plus. And all these are in aqueous, 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 and aqueous solution. So if you check uh, this, it has got three marks. So your showing of this, that, and the overall expression is what should give us a three marks as a way of answering this question. Okay. So boys and girls, I hope we did justice to this question. And you can actually see that without the background information of understanding of how electrochemical cells operate, more especially the galvanic cell, it's a, a, how you make use of the a standard electrode potentials and also the theory behind the mechanism of the operation of a galvanic cell, it will be very difficult to address all these questions raised in any typical examination question. And you can actually see that it's got 14 marks and it has covered all the concepts explained in the galvanic cell, I mean, in the electrochemical cell uh, concept. Thank you very much. When we meet next time, we will do, uh, we will finish the last section of um, electrochemical cells where we'll be talking about batteries. Thank you. And God bless.